Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's good to have you here with me again. So question, have you ever wanted to create your own web parts? And I don't mean embedded web parts like we've done with Figma before. I mean fully legit SharePoint framework SPFX web parts. Well, if the answer to that is yes, then today is a great day because that's what we're going to do here together. And if you're thinking you need to be a coding genius or wizard, well, the great news is you don't because I'm not and I managed to do it so you can too. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So by the end of this video, be prepared to add SharePoint developer to your LinkedIn profile and receive all the accolades and praise you could imagine. So you might be wondering, well, how on earth could this be possible? Well, in the age we live in, it's two letters, A and I. We stick them together and we get amazing SharePoint web parts, apparently. But that's what we're going to use. All you need to do is know what you want to do and we can let the computer gods take care of the rest. So with that being said, let's get into the video. This video is sponsored by me and Academy 365, which is a site where I have a number of courses that will take you from zero to absolute SharePoint hero. These courses are structured to guide you step by step on how to deliver the most common internet requirements I see day in and day out. Whether you're building a new internet site or indeed need to uplift and revitalize an existing site, these courses are for you. And the best thing is you don't have to be a techie to take them, right? These courses have been carefully designed so they're accessible to anybody with any level of experience within SharePoint. We have the SharePoint Point Site Builder Masterclass version two, which is an updated version of my original flagship course. This course guides you on how to create a typical internet department site step-by-step -step, jam packed with the most common requirements I see from real world experience. We also have the SharePoint Training and Education Platform Site course, which will show you how to create amazing educational experiences within SharePoint. Both courses are laser focused on end user experience. So you'll be able to wow your users, your colleagues, and even your bosses. If you're interested, there's a link below along with a tasty discount. Now back to the video. So what are we going to build? Let's take a look at a demo site here. Like all my demo sites, they're on weird and wonderful topics. This one happens to be about travel. But if we look here, I've created two custom web parts following my method here. So the first one is a welcome web part. Now, I don't know why SharePoint doesn't come with this. It probably will pretty soon. But basically, if you have an internet, it's always nice if you can welcome people by name. It doesn't mean a whole lot, but it means something to somebody because it's always nice to see. So we can see here we have this web part that says welcome Dan Carroll. That's me. I'm the person viewing this page so it knows that and it displays my name for me welcoming me and I feel all warm and cuddly. Now if I swap over to a different user in this case we have Tony Stark we can see it's welcome Tony Stark. So it works it takes whoever's viewing the page and will display their name. So if we come back here I'm going to stick the page into edit mode and we can see this web part is called welcome and I can come over here to the settings and I have everything in here I could ever want because I gave the special specification for this web part. I said everything I wanted and it just was created for me as such. So we have things here like I have the welcome text so I can say welcome. So anything I choose to say and then I have this placeholder for current users. So if you wanted a sentence, you could just put this placeholder anywhere you want it. Then we have something here called fallback text. So I thought it would be nice if for some reason we can't resolve the user's name. We'd have just a generic welcome message that gets us around not knowing who the person was. And then I just said, well, it would be nice to be able to control the color of the font. If I wanted to put a background, it'd be nice to do that. I could specify a color. I could specify the opacity so I could make it, you know, kind of see through if I wanted to. And then I have things like the font size if I wanted to be bold text or italic text. So these are all properties that I said I wanted in my web part. And then they were here and they all work perfectly. It's absolutely a beautiful thing. The second web part I built because I got so excited that the first one worked was a custom button web part, which is down here. I've got two instances of it here. So we all know SharePoint gives us the normal button web part, but I wanted a button V2 that had a little bit more flexibility. So if I click on this web part and look at its settings, well, very similar to the normal button web part, I can have a target URL and button text. But now I get some additional options for styling. So I could set a background color for the button itself. So I have two different colors here that I specified. I can have a different color for the text if I want. I can set the font size. I could say it's bold text or not. I could increase or decrease the border radius, which gives me these nice pill kind of shaped buttons. And then I can also include, you know, if I want the horizontal padding or the vertical padding, basically that's just the space around the words. If I want chunky buttons or I want slim buttons, it gives me the options to do that. So after figuring this out and creating these two web parts very quick and to be honest, very painlessly, I, uh, I couldn't wait to share this with you guys. So I haven't gone any further than this myself, but you know, 
Uh, I think it's something that I will be, well, I don't think, I know, I'm going to be exploring this a hell of a lot over the coming weeks and months. And it would be great if you guys did too. If you do, please let me know down below what you've done with it. It'd be nice if we could learn this type of thing together. And these two web parts I've developed, I'm also going to include them in the blog post that I have to accompany this video. I'll link it down below. So to install them, you get a package file at the end of it. I'm going to add those package files to the blog post that I create to accompany this video link in the description below. So feel free to take them and explore them if you want. Put them onto your tenant. They're tenant agnostic, right? And they're very simple web parts. So very little risk involved in that. So by all means, go ahead and have a play with them in a, a demo tenant or a test environment if you have it. So they're the web parts. I think in this video, what we'll do is I'm going to recreate this welcome web part so you can follow exactly what I do and see how it works in practice. And so that's a nice segue into it. Well, okay, Dan, enough about what you did. How the heck did you do it? Well, the simple answer is there is a AI platform called Cursor. Uh, and Cursor is very much development focused. So effectively, it's an application you can download and there's a free version. And of course, there's a paid tier if you want to get big into it and do lots of stuff with it. The free version is absolutely fine. I created these two web parts using the free version because they give you a free trial of the pro for like two weeks. So it's very handy to do. And this is not sponsored, by the way. It's just really cool. So you can use the free version. Um, or the, the pro version, whatever suits you. But basically it's a code editor, but with a twist in that you can just talk to it like a normal human. So you can say what you want and it's going to start doing the things for you. So when I first came across the platform, I was a bit apprehensive because I thought it was just like another chat GPT. It would give me instructions on how to do it, but this is different. This actually did it all for me. Now it's going to suggest I will do this and you say, yes, please go ahead and do it and it'll do it. So I didn't have to create any directories or folders or anything like that. It did everything for me, created the code. It spotted errors in its own code and it checked it. And then that was pretty much it. It just created and it was good to go. So it really is the closest thing to magic that I've ever seen, to be honest. Now, what I can help you with, because Cursor does all the code, I can't really help you with the code, but I'm going to show you uh, an example of me creating it. But what I can help you with is some tips on the prompts that you might give it. So when it comes to the prompts, one thing that we can do and that we have control over is being very clear about what we want the outcome to be or what we want the web part that we ultimately get to do. Now, my recommendation would be to take a business analyst approach to this and structure your request much like a business analyst would to any other developer. And a very good way to do that is to use something called a user story and a set of accompanying acceptance criteria. Now, this is kind of BA 101 type of stuff, but it's very simple in that our user story will communicate the intent of what it is we're looking to do at a high level. And it's a very structured format for a user story. It contains three sentences and there's a set structure to it. So it will be as a, I want, so that. So in terms of our welcome web part, we might write a user story that would be something like, as a visitor to a SharePoint online site, I want to see a personalized welcome message that addresses me by name, so that I feel acknowledged and have a welcoming user experience when accessing a page. Very simple, okay? You don't have to over egg it, but something like that that just gives the story of what it is you're looking to do. Now, acceptance criteria, they're more specific, right? They talk about, well, if we did get something out the other end and we were to test it, what are the specific pieces of functionality that must be in place in order for us to accept the solution? So that's why they're called acceptance criteria. So again, for our welcome web part, the acceptance criteria that I would use would be something like this. The web part must be available within the SharePoint Online toolbox and it must be titled welcome. The property pane must allow the site owner to enter a custom welcome message containing the placeholder current user. The web part must replace current user with the current user's displayed name when viewed. If the current user's display name cannot be retrieved, the web part must display a fallback message entered by the site owner. The site owner must be able to customize the welcome message styling using font color, font size, bold and italic settings. The site owner must be able to choose a background color and opacity level for the message box. The message box must include a padding of eight pixels and 15 pixels for visual comfort. The web part must display the welcome message immediately on page load without delay. The web part must be responsive, adapting to different screen sizes and page section widths. And you must use the latest supported version of SPFX for SharePoint Online. So you can see they're very specific statements um, which will instruct the cursor AI in how to build what 
it is we want to build and the functionality we expect to be in it. So look, don't overthink it and get bogged down in this part of it. If you know what it is you wanted to do, just bullet point these things out, feed it into something like ChatGPT and ask it to act like a business analyst and construct a user story and accompanying set of acceptance criteria, which match your, your bullet points. Simple as that. But when you do that, you've got a very clear set of instructions. And that's where we'll go over to Cursor AI now and we'll get this show on the road. So now into the fun bit we've all been waiting for. So what you want to do is you want to go to cursor.com, sign up, create an account, download the code editor. And when you do, you're going to have something that looks a little bit like this. So what you want to do is over on the right hand side, you want to pop out the AI pane. And this is where we're going to interact with cursor and tell it what it is we want to do. So you're going to pop in the start of your prompt. So what I have here is create a complete SharePoint framework SPFX web part called Hello. Now I'm using hello because I've already created one called welcome. So I just don't want to confuse my life any more than it is already. So web part called hello using react for SharePoint online. I'll hold shift and return to give me a new line. And I'm going to say I will provide you with a user story and acceptance criteria, which will tell you what I want the web part to do. Okay, so you put that in there, which is fine. And then what we'll do is you're going to basically paste in your user story and acceptance criteria. So I'll paste mine in like so and we have it in there like that. I'm just going to go enter and now cursor is going to do its magic. And then this is how cursor typically works. It's going to say if it finds an error or it needs to do something, it's going to tell you what this is. So we we'll go through this warts and all right, you'll see the stuff that I'm coming up against. So could not resolve URL. OK, that's fine. So we wanted to do it. So it says here waiting for approval. So you're going to see these things down here where it's going to do something, but it needs you to accept that it's going to do it. So you just click accept and then it's going to go ahead and do its thing. So like I said, this is what's great about it, right? It's there working away finding issues and then resolving them on the fly, which is great. So what happened here was it told me it didn't have permissions to, to create what it needs to create. So I just said, how can I give you permissions to do this for me? And then it said a load of stuff and now it's checking for everything it needs to check for. And I just keep clicking run. So it's come back to me and it said that I'm running an old version of Node.js, whatever that is and it's not compatible with the latest framework version. So it's going to update it. And again, all I have to do is say run. And now it's installed the latest version and it's going to create the directory for the project. So it kind of continues like this, right? If it comes up against a roadblock, it's going to suggest something and you just have to say run. So I say run again. And now it's going to launch the SharePoint framework generator web part thing. I don't even know what it's called. So I'll say run again. You'll get this little generator thing popping up here. So you just got to answer these questions. So we want a web part. What's the name of your web part? So we can say hello, enter again. And when it asks you what template you'd want to use, you want to go down to react and pick that. And now it's going to do more stuff and continue the process. So now that the generator ran and now it came up with another error. So it says, I see we need to use an absolute path. Let's modify the files in your project. So essentially it came up with an error and now it knows how to fix it. It just needs us to give it the go ahead. So we'll say accept. And then we get all this beautiful code on the left hand side, which again, I have no idea what what it means, but we're just going to trust the process. OK, so now we just have to say accept again. And now it wants to update the React component and that's fine with me. So I'll say accept. We need to update the SCSS module again. I don't know, but OK, wants to do something else again. I'll say OK. Now it needs to update another file, accept again. So effectively, you just follow the prompts and you say accept and run and OK. It'll find any errors and it'll fix the errors. And eventually it's going to give you a package file or tell you where to find it. So we have our hello web part package file, and now we can bring it into SharePoint and actually try it out on one of our sites. So it's a very simple process to create the web part. Now I am obviously putting a lot of trust in cursor to create it correctly. And you could maybe deploy it into a, a demo or test environment first if you feel a bit uneasy about it or if in your organization there is a certain kind of development life cycle that they need to follow that's absolutely fine i'm just kind of showing you that you can get these web part files created but now that we have this one created i'm going to install it and let's see what we get again just to really demonstrate that it can be done and this easily and this quickly so back over in sharepoint what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the admin center i'm going to go to the sharepoint admin center. I'm going to click on more features. 
and I'm going to go to apps. And in here, you can see the web parts that I've created. That's my button one and that's my welcome one. So we just want to add in our new web part in here. So to do that, we just say upload and you're going to navigate to where your web part was created. And again, cursor will tell you exactly where that is. So you come in here, you click on SharePoint solution, and then you should see your SPPKG file in here. That's our web part and that's what we need to upload. So I'm going to say upload. And now you've got two choices here. You can either make it available to all sites with it in your tenant, or you can just enable the app and then it needs to be added manually from within each site. I'm going to choose enable this app only. Okay, I'm not going to add it to every site because I'm just testing it here. So I'll say enable app. And now we see that the app has been enabled. So I'll say close. I'll come back to my site. And now what I'll do is I'll go to site contents. And we can see here there's the button web part that I had added in that way because that web part I also did this way. When you add it to all sites, it's just available in the toolbox straight away. But what we're going to do is we're going to say new. I'm going to say app. I'm going to go to from my organization and I see my hello web part in here. So I'm going to add it and we see it's been added successfully. So I'll come back to the site in here and now it's moment of truth time, right? So I'll put the page into edit mode and we'll just create a new section just for the sake of it. So now if we come up here and we go to add in a new web part and we search for hello, we have a web part here. I don't know why the icon's not here. I'll look into that. But if we click that in here, we have this welcome Dan Carroll. So if we go to edit properties, we can see here are all of the properties that we asked for to be in here. So isn't this just magic? It's amazing. So if I want to add a little bit more to this, I can add in my little waving hand emoji comes in like that. And we have our current user in here. And our fallback message could be welcome guest or something like that. We can have our background color set to white, which is fine in that case. We can increase the font size, make it a bit bigger. We can make it bold text. And just like that, we have this web part and we can, of course, pop it in here to our flexible section if we want. And that's where we can see the changes that we make um, to the background and stuff a little bit better. So you can see here it's nice and responsive, so it'll wrap around. We can change our background color or we could leave it as is, but just reduce the opacity. And then we can, of course, change our text color to something like white, which would be one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. So you can see it is uh, it's really cool. Actually, let's change the background color to black. We have it like that and we could increase the opacity if we wanted something to work like that. Excellent. Nice one. So there you go. Look, it's a bit of trial and error. You play around with cursor. It's going to find all your errors or if something doesn't work right. You can always just ask it to fix it. You just talk to it like a, a person, but it's a really smart person. So it works pretty cool. But for now, I'll just delete that from here because we already have this original one here. I'll delete this section, put the page back to how it was. And actually, a little side note, that's a nice little feature that was recently introduced, which is the animation of certain web parts. So if I scroll down the page, you'll see our editorial web parts are animating into place. Similarly with our Quick Links web part. If you haven't seen that on various web parts, including editorial card people, quick links as well as the events web part it does it as well but if you come into the settings you'll know if a web part can do it because it now has an animation toggle so you can stick it on always looks pretty nice so look that was a bit of a whistle stop tour so you know if you have the privileges and you're comfortable with doing it by all means test it out or even hand it over and make the people who are more developer orientated aware of this because they can really create these web parts pretty quick. Now again, the web parts, the welcome and the button V2, I'll stick them up on my blog. The link will be below. Feel free to do what you want with them. It's totally up to you. So hopefully you found this video useful or at least it just gave you a bit of food for thought in how you can use these tools. Like I said, I know I'm certainly gonna be playing around with this a lot more. So I will have more videos on this topic very soon. So if you did find this video useful and I'll like and subscribe would be much appreciated, but no worries if you don't want it, that's totally fine. And until our next video, I will see you then. See ya.